On tonight's video, a panda sings a song. Simon pretends to be a car. Yep. And John's drone piloting skills dramatically improve. Welcome back to the channel for part 2 of our 2021 Yorkshire Dales meet. After a fairly gentle Saturday exploring some of the scenic lanes of Wensleydale, the plan for day 2 was to head north to the Swaledale area in search of something to really challenge our little Italian off-roaders. This route was advertised on our Facebook group as extremely difficult and quite likely to damage the vehicles, so only the most capable drivers and machines in full working order were invited. Despite these incredibly strict requirements, Simon turned up, uh, with a very sad sounding clutch release bearing. But he was only four hours from home with work the next day, so what could possibly go wrong? After welcoming Lee and his lifted Mark IV to his first UK Panda 4x4 event, we headed to a short lane near Aysgarth which will give everyone a good idea of what to expect on our extreme day out. This lane is very tight and scratchy with a healthy dose of rocks and steep sections. It's put off many Defender and Land Cruiser owners in the past but it was no problem for the Pandas. With everybody now well aware that they may not get home with all of the paint they started the day with, we took the long route to Reef via the famous Buttertubs Pass. The next lane on our route was featured before on this channel, when Andy and I went exploring with a very rare giant panda. Click the link on the screen to watch that video now. The lane in question is known locally as The Rock, but we just can't seem to figure out why. Oh, you're filming, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm a car! <laughs> Yeah, I think stick to the left. That's my plan. It's this bit that looks fun. Yeah, I made I made this bit because <laughs> uh, there wasn't a very good ramp onto these rocks. Um, but yeah, I think if you get your foot up on there, then you just bounce along those nice uh, tire puncturing rocks over there. Yeah, I mean all the tires on this side are going to be punctured. <laughs> How many cars have we got? Five cars, ten, ten tires. You'd need. <laughs> right. Are you ready? <clears throat> Okay. I'm ready. Are you ready? All right, let's get rocking. <coughs> so despite being offered an easy diversion and being warned that my lifted car really struggled with this lane last time, Simon set off to give it a go in his Mark III. This car was fitted with road tyres, standard suspension and the 1.2 litre petrol engine. It's worth taking note of how slowly Simon was able to crawl up this lane despite all the rocks and the steep gradient. This lane really demonstrates that even though the petrol engine isn't the most powerful in the range, uh, it really is very well suited to off-roading, especially in extreme terrain like this.
I'm looking at it. Yeah, I'm really proud of those uh, welds, actually. <laughs> I missed a bit. The I think you missed the bit that attaches it to the car, didn't you? Uh, well, I mean... <laughs> Otherwise, it'd still be attached, wouldn't it? Nah. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but yeah, it's a um, very well silent engine, that really. Didn't even need this. Well, I did I mean. notice the noise jump oh, right, when okay. it fell off. I but it was only slight. I thought I just like damaged the flexi coupling or something. But. Nope. So next up was Lee in his Mark IV. This car has been lifted and has some very aggressive tyres fitted, much like my Mark III. This should make this climb very easy for Lee, but as we're about to see, the 1.3 diesel engine just can't deliver the same front as the petrol in this slow speed situation. There have been many discussions on our Facebook group about which engine is best in the Panda 4x4 range, with some very keen diesel fans adamant that the Multijet has more torque at low revs. This is simply not the case of real world situations, and we have seen many times the naturally aspirated petrol achieve things the turbo diesel just can't. Now there is no doubt that on the road the Multijet is the far superior engine. Um, all of us agree that. Uh, it's more refined, it's faster, and it's much more economical. But when it comes to serious off-roading, the 1.2 petrol fitted to the Mark III 4x4 is definitely the engine you want. Lee is struggling to make progress on this loose and steep surface uh, because he needs to keep the revs high in order to keep the turbo working. As soon as he hits the stubborn rock, the revs fall, the engine bogs down and the momentum is lost, uh, usually resulting in stalling. We've also seen similar results in thick mud and on other steep climbs. John, you might need to dig a path for him. Hang on a sec. Uh, yeah, also hang on a sec, I'm coming through. <laughs> Terrifying noise. <laughs> oh, it's before, yeah, you're right. Is the LD definitely off? Okay, sorry. I got the handbrake and my car's failed, and I'm covering a red mess. <laughs> Three. Nice one. So after that dramatic run from Lee, it was time for James and the Mark II to show us all just how easy it is. At this sort of stuff, I mean Andy went straight after it with no problems, so and I struggled the first time I did Mind you, Andy's got a bigger lift on it, hasn't it? So. There, by the way, we need to get there. Easy. 
Z. Ah, so that's how you do it. I think the diesels have got enough load down to rock like what's it? See that is that moment, isn't it? He bogged down then and then he just carries on. And again, these are what are stalled there. Nice and easy. <laughs> All I got was John's ass crack there. <laughs> Did he come in? <laughs> With most of the morning spent climbing the rock, we found ourselves at the perfect time to stop for lunch at Dale's Bike Centre. Dale's is one of the best small cafes in this area and we highly recommend stopping by for their delicious handmade cakes and snacks, whether you're a cyclist, a walker or a green laner. Unfortunately John had picked up a puncture, but it didn't take long to swap it out and it gave John another chance to show off his assets. John, there's going to be more footage of your ass in this video than there is going to be of pandas.
So thanks for watching everyone, that's the end of the video. Um, after this lane we all drove home absolutely safe and with all the cars in one piece and nothing else of interest happened on that day. Hang on, I've just found some more footage. Um, well, I guess we did do another lane and uh, I can't really remember what happened on this one but um, let's have a look shall we. And then watch that big one in the middle. Yeah. Out this way. And then This one here, go round it. So it's, so it's clutch gone. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah, I think it's more slaves in there rather than his thrust bearing. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking if we lube up, lube up the shaft a little bit, yeah. give it a little bit of that, then um, have any of you got a little bit of lube. Yeah, yeah. always got a lube of shaft for a good day out, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, well, we've got an OTS, like 13. Yeah, um, I've got no clutch. <laughs> What we're saying. So, see that little piston out there? Oh, that's what it's I don't I'm just thinking if we spray some WD on the sleeve cylinder, it might free it up a little bit and cool it down as well. Because mine gets stickier than it's hot. So Simon, oh. at the start of the day, yeah. what was wrong with your car? At the start of the day, yeah. well, a small bit of trim on the bumper came off, so that was that was the main issue. Then there was like a small problem with uh, a clutch bearing, got, got a bit squealy. Um, <clears throat> and what does the clutch do in a car? Um, uh, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean it moves up and down, but then it's, the pedal now sticks. Yeah, but in general, <laughs> what do clutches do for manual cars? I think they grip things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they give you drive, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they give you drive. And so when you're in the arse end of nowhere, yeah, yeah. with some rocks to get down and go up, what, what could you really do with? Probably, uh, probably a clutch. Yeah. 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 But, you know, we've lubed it now, so um, I reckon yeah. it's worth a try. Yeah. You know, well then, give it a go. Alright, oh, sounds fixed. Nothing. That's... There's nothing. Right then. There's no, there's no drive Hello. 
what's happening. Um, me and Lee were ahead of Simon when he broke down, which meant that we couldn't get round the back to tow him back up the hill. So we are now going on a 26-minute uh, round trip to get to the other side of the river um, so we can get round behind him and try and give him a tow up. Um, in the meantime, we're waiting for a Facebook recovery page to hopefully help us out. Uh, they've been very helpful in the past. Um, so hopefully someone from there is local and can come and give us a hand. Um, but otherwise we're going to be stuck with, with my Mark III trying to tow him back up those rocks, which may be difficult. So uh, we'll check back in in a bit and see how we're getting on once we've uh, rejoined the lane at the right place. So good news. We've just driven all the way around to get back to where we can tow from and we've spotted a convoy of massive trucks. And they're not going anywhere until Simon goes somewhere, so I think we found our rescue. Look at this for a stroke of luck. 4x4 four four tour guide. It's your lucky day, Simon. It's your lucky day, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a massive army king. <laughs> well, we've posted it on several groups. Oh, you're back. I had a, um, <laughs> I had a, a farmer in, in tow as well, as a defender. He was following me up, oh, yeah, and then we saw this lot, like. so, so I told him to do one. And <laughs> well, he's saying he thinks it's easier to pull it down to the bottom and drag it up the other end. Uh, yeah, if he knows, if he knows this he route. He's been down here. Yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah. Cool, yeah, he's happy to do that. Okay. He could probably roll. We could probably roll him down the hairpin rather than. We'll be able to roll you down the hairpin down to the river probably. Yeah, once, yeah, once you're off that, yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't want to go down there because uh, I thought there's no way we're going to get him out of there because obviously got that slab on the other side and then coming up this way is. Uh, yeah, you'd be alright in this. Right, right on yes. the left. Yeah, yeah. Over to the left. Yeah, oh, get him literally. Oh, no more. <laughs> yeah, we'll I thought that bank we need to get him. Yeah, yeah. the light, yeah. That'll do ya, that'll do ya. Alright. I'm going to shut that noise off. You'll see what I mean about why the pandas can make this look easy yeah. where the big ones can't now. We'll have to shunt round it. Big drop slope over there, don't worry.
and I see it now with a wee. Pulling you back? Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got a wee for the wind shot. Right, then, so there's uh, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I reckon we're right, it's the one that I'm not over. Yeah, correct. There you go. I'll, I'll put, like, put it in this. Yeah. Like you have to rock it a little bit. Yeah. This one. This one, no, okay. this one, this one now. Oh. Right, yeah, that's right, well that, uh, I'll get in, turn the engine on and get your steering going so we can take you down. Damn it. Give it a push, John. Sorry, handbrake. <laughs> That's it, nice and easy. Hard right. Yeah, keep going, keep going. That's it, you'll start coming back down now. And then hard right all the way around. Do you want to take that? I've got waterproof shoes on, so yeah. I'll push it through the river. Yeah, the only issue is that we don't walk all the way back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was thinking that. It's in passenger seat. Can you not put it round? Hey, Kev would be in his element with it being two hours. Eh? What's happened? He's just dragged him round. He needs to come back a bit. We're going to have to push this out. He should come over that, won't he? Remember, he's going to be pulling you towards the fence, so just try and... So to steer, that looks he's done it now. Yeah, he's got it round now. It's just getting round that, that bit. Stopping you there for now to get his customers down, which is fair enough. Yeah. There is a technique on here. Sorry, what, sorry? Yeah, 
back side down. There you go. Left. Left hand down, sorry, left hand. There you go. You there. Now, there you go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where are they taking him to? Drop him at the top of there. Yeah, there's a village mask, I think it is. He's rather amazing there. So we need to work out what we're doing with this next, don't we? See you guys! I'll take it we draw straws to see who's towing him back to. Well, get recovered from there. Oh, I guess it's a good place, they need to load up onto a truck, isn't it? Right, that's it for this weekend. Uh, we're wet. We've broken a car. We broke two tyres yesterday. One tyre today. A clutch today. We've just been towed back by a load of Jeeps. And now it's pissing it down and we're all soaked and wet of the AA. So, we'll see you next time. Say goodbye. Simon's taxi has arrived. So after the cameras had been turned off and everyone else had gone home, uh, the AA towed Simon's car to my house, uh, which was about 15 miles away. Me and Simon then spent the next two days on my driveway, taking his kit box out, replacing the clutch and the thrust bar, and putting it all back together again. Um, he finally got home on, I think it was the early hours of Wednesday, um, but I'd have to correct me if I'm wrong, Simon. But yeah, it was an eventful weekend. Um, Everyone had a good time, apart from Simon. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you all next time.